Hello and welcome again to Bowman MSE, Speed Trap Consulting's review of another turbocharger that we have on the market. Uh, today we're looking strictly at a full Garrett product. This is the GTX 3076R turbocharger. And as we can tell for this particular model, we had it uh, specially powder coated and high heat ceramic coated for your viewing pleasure as well as for the customer's needs. As usual, we'll go through our six main points, which is engine size application, purpose, power level and characteristics of the turbo, composition, specifications, and price. Engine size application, actually this is uh, pretty simple for this one. This is, uh, in a single application, is best used for 1.8 liter to 2.8 liter four cylinder applications. Uh, or you can go to 2.5 liter to 3.5 liter six cylinder applications uh, to be able to utilize this best. In a twin set, uh, this is really best used for those that are 2.5 liter to 4 liter six cylinder application uh, or anything over 4 liters in terms of a V8 application. The sky's the limit on these. Um, in twins, we've seen them as high as about 1,000 horsepower uh, with a little bit better response than twin GT35R. So this is uh, a pretty robust and versatile turbo to be able to use uh, for any size application for an engine that's over 1.8 liters. Uh, to be able to use. The purpose uh, for this turbo really is like with any circuit, road race, or time attack turbocharger, it's made for mid-range power and a bit of top end. Uh, it's not the ultimate response monster, say, similar to a GT3051B or even its counterpart, the GTX3071R, but it's extremely uh, comparable to it. Uh, what this is, is now, instead of having just simply a GT3076R or going through an aftermarket company to be able to get uh, the latest technology and billet wheel designs or just a differentiation in designs, you now are able to have a full Garrett package uh, with their R&D, warranties, usability, and repairability that are, are known within the company. Power level and characteristics is that it's extremely responsive utilizing the turbine wheel of the standard 3076R. This did not change uh, when it came to being able to uh, use the switch between the GT3076R and the GTX 3076R. It uses the same 60 millimeter exhaust wheel. The compressor wheel actually itself is created for high rotational speeds for upper end power to completely flow this exhaust wheel by using an 11 bladed design. Uh, some may argue that it's very much like a truck application and that's why they changed from the splitter blade design. Uh, but after some testing and some views that I've been able to see over the last year or so that this uh, application's been out, it's actually very robust and very responsive for an 11 bladed design, uh, considering of course it does have an extended uh, tip edge that's on the exducer part of the wheel. So I think that it's extremely nice to be able to now have a full Garrett package using a high quality OEM grade aluminum wheel uh, that still has the high standards that Garrett likes to put forth. This particular one does have some similar characteristics uh, to the TR3030R and the GT76 HTA from Force Performance, uh, but my honest opinion is that uh, this is actually going to have a bit more mid-range and top end and a little bit less responsive than say uh, the GT3076R. I think the GTX 3071R would be a similar fit to the TR3030R. I know I'm kicking out a lot of numbers at the same time here, uh, but I think that this is still a very good match for those that want, that have a GT3076R and want to be able to upgrade with a bit more mid-range power, but don't want to expect the world, okay? Let's look at the composition. As I said, this has been fully designed, assembled, and built from Garrett in Japan. Uh, we didn't do any aftermarket adjustments other than the coating for this particular unit that we have here. Uh, it uses the same restrictors, lines, and fitting cartridge as a GT3076R. So in other words, this really uses the same flanging system. I have one already fitted here uh, with the Allen bolts already set. And the same 14 millimeter uh, water fittings that are a requirement in order to run this turbocharger, not an option. And then, of course, for most vehicle applications, uh, especially in four and six cylinder designs, the 30 thousandths restrictor to be able to keep oil pressure at a continuous 22 PSI is, again, required on this particular application. Um, a lot of people forget sometimes that the use of water is extremely important, uh, especially when it comes to these particular turbochargers, 
not just because of their particular use in terms of the circuit or the track, but when the car actually shuts down, uh, this turbo and most of these other turbos have a tendency to be able to transfer that heat that was coming from your exhaust manifold and transfer right here into the cartridge system. That's what wears the bearing systems down over time uh, and as well as the additional friction that ball bearing cartridges tend to have. So the use of water really is not just about um, cooling while it's running. That is an additional additive to it because now the oil can be able to cool, I mean be able to lubricate and the water can be able to cool the system. At the same time though, it really relaxes the heat transfer that's going to occur between the turbine housing, which is easily going to reach almost 1800 degrees, all the way over into this cartridge. So um, Garrett in their infinite wisdom felt that the use for water in this particular application, as well as any of their GTX series, is a requirement and not an option. The compressor wheel that we believe is using a T 670, 75 billet aluminum uh, that is from Garrett's facility. So we don't have to worry about whether or not there's any kind of issue of uh, an aftermarket failure or anything like that. This is using uh, ISO 9001 and 9002 standards just like they would with the OEM. So now you know you're getting a real quality product. Let's quickly look at some specifications and then we'll go into price. Specifications for this is a uh, .60 AR uh, specialized GT3076 compressor cover with a two inch outlet and a four inch inlet, okay? The inducer for this is 58 millimeter as opposed to the standard 3076R which is about 57 millimeter. The exducer which is uh, the, the larger part of the blade that you can't see in the back here is actually 76.6 millimeter. The standard GT3076R is 76.2 millimeter. Not that big of a difference, but enough with this change in design to where we're looking at an excess of about uh, 30 to 40 more horsepower in the same application. This is a 58 trim, and according to Garrett, the compressor wheel is capable of about 63 pounds a minute of airflow at about 2.5 pressure ratios, as opposed to the 3076R, the regular one, um, is capable of about 52 pounds a minute at about 2 pressure ratios. The turbine has options just like any other of the GTR family. So that's why this turbo specifically is sold uh, without a turbine housing because there are, is the possibility that a person already has a GTR series and wants to simply change cartridges. Uh, this turbine uh, uses the same exhaust wheel as the uh, standard GT3076R which is a 60 millimeter uh, wheel diameter with a 55 millimeter exducer okay, and an 84 trim. So it's the same wheel and the same turbine housing is able to fit with it. Uh, the choice in turbine housings are going to be just like any of the other uh, GTR series. T3 full tile V-band or you can do like this one which is a T3 GT with a 3 inch V-band. Um, this V-band is specifically for Garrett cartridges and many other models may not be able to fit with it. The cool part about this though is you do have an option of a T31 2.5 inch 4 bolt. So for those that had a T3 T04E in the standard 4-bolt configuration, you can now pick up this turbocharger and still be able to get it in a 4-bolt configuration that will bolt up to your existing downpipe. So you don't have to necessarily change this out if you don't want to, but many people tend to do so uh, just because it's uh, uh, better looking and it's easier to assemble and disassemble. Let's look at some final thoughts really. Uh, this is a great upgrade uh, for the GT3076R. You can turn in your original GT3076R uh, to your Garrett distributor or dealer, be able to upgrade uh, to this particular model and be able to bolt right on, retune and drive. Uh, as long as you're, you have a good cartridge and you want to make your turbo almost like new again, this is a great upgrade option. Uh, it does make about the same power as the GT3076R HTA and TR3030R from Speed Trap, which is about 560 horsepower. Um, in the TR3030R video that I have, uh, you'll notice that I make a comparison instead of apples to oranges. This is really an apples to apples comparison. It's just a matter of whether or not you want Washington, Granny Smith, or Macintosh apples uh, in terms of its response and characteristics. I honestly have to say though, uh, from what I've seen in the use of this turbo, that it's not as responsive as the GTX 3076R, uh, even though this one has a bit more top end and it uses the same 60 millimeter exhaust wheel. 
If you really want a new turbo upgrade to the GT3076R and don't mind a brand new turbo, this is where I kind of think the GTX 3071R kind of comes into play. I have a video out on that as well you could be able to check out. Um, one final note, even though if you check out compressor maps on this turbocharger uh, from Turbo uh, by Garrett Online or from whatever sources, it will really show that the compressor wheel is capable of about 600 wheel horsepower, about 63 pounds a minute. That's just the compressor wheel. That does not mean that the turbine wheel will allow it to make over 600 wheel horsepower. So don't be fooled by simply looking at the compressor map only. Look at the entire package and uh, you'll be able to see that about 560 or so is about as good as it's going to get. Uh, there is an upgrade now for the GT35R that uses a GT35R turbine and this same uh, GTX3076 wheel, which might be a better fit and match for those that want a bit more top end uh, and they still want to keep high rotational speeds in a 2.2 to 2.6 liter uh, application, either four cylinder or six. I honestly think that this is a great and reliable turbo for the money. Cost on these typically is about $1,730. Uh, that's with the turbine housing included. You're looking at about $1,400 or so uh, without turbine housing, and they do offer um, you know, choices in being able to get both. Uh, I think it's a great turbo for the money, especially with a reliable source for uh, billet wheel technology. Uh, no knockoffs, fakes, or anything else like that uh, that go to seriously high standards, very similar to Borg Warner. Great money. Um, of course, the additional coatings for something like this would add about another $180, but that's really more for aesthetic reasons. I think that's it. So uh, if there's any questions, please give us an email, of course, at speedtrapconsulting at yahoo.com. And as always, happy boosting. Take care.